Hi and welcome back to LDF Designs. In today's video I am going to be working on this mulberry paper with my encaustic. We're going to use some different things to mark it up and then I'm going to be adding some paper doilies and some material and other items to the paper and show you how that works. I've worked on paper a, a few times. Um, I haven't done it on camera very often, but I do love this particular paper because it becomes kind of see-through and it makes a really great uh, piece to hang up and kind of just let it free hang. Um, it looks really neat with lights behind it and it just does all kinds of interesting and fun things. So I'm going to start off as I usually do, just making marks on my paper with some pencil and then I'll move on and start using some of the other items as well. Just trying to get a, several things on here before I start applying the encaustic. So this is just some walnut ink and I'm using a Q-tip and just applying some walnut ink um, along the edges and just in random areas. And I also went ahead and applied some on some of the other items that I plan on putting onto the piece. And then I just started using some oil pastels. Because I'm using them in a light manner, uh, it's, not a, it's not applied real heavy. Uh, the encaustic will go on over it. If you use the oil pastels in a really thick um, application, then it won't work as well. If I had a big enough palette, uh, once I got all of this on here, I would have actually put the encaustic on my palette and laid the paper in it. But I don't have enough space on my hot palette to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make marks on here with my pan pastels and, and all of my stencils and whatnot. And then I'm gonna brush the encaustic on. Sometimes, just note to those of you who like to use these or haven't done it very often, if you are gonna use it in this way it will pull the pan pastel or potentially the oil pastel um, with the brush just know that it can do that and be aware of it my camera doesn't pick it up super well but you can always tell when the paper starts to absorb the encaustic because it becomes see-through it becomes transparent and um, when you're up closer working with it like I am, you can kind of tell when it starts to soak all of that in. Because my paper wasn't exactly flat, um, it started to pool in a few areas, so I was trying to scrape some of those pooled encaustic areas back just a little bit. And then what I'm doing here is I went ahead and dipped my doily down into the encaustic, and now I'm just burnishing it with some um, parchment paper and adhering that to the previous wax layer. And I'll be doing that a couple of times. Just so you know, I do not completely finish this piece on the video. Um, once I turned the video off, I did go ahead and do a few more things with it. And I'll have some pictures of it, hopefully a couple here at the end of the video, but also I'll have them over on my Instagram page. Right now I'm just layering all of these different items that I've chosen. I purchased recently some beeswax from a local beekeeper. It was just plain old beeswax, but it was the most beautiful transparent orange. So I tried using that a little bit on that doily. Um, it, it did show the color slightly, um, but it didn't come through quite as well as I thought it might. Um, but that's a fun thing to use. It smells so good. <laughs> My plan was to go ahead and roll a doll rod up onto the top of this and then later I'm going to adhere either some wire or string or rope or something um, to be able to hang this and I don't exactly get that done in the video either but that's the plan. So I just put encaustic on the paper, rolled it around the doll rod and then 
um, went ahead and heated that up so that it all it soaked into the doll rod. So the second doily, I did dip into that yellow wax um, instead of the clear wax just to see if I could bring that color forward a little bit. I'm sure if I had put white encaustic under it, it would show up a lot better. But because I have kind of clear encaustic and some other colors under there, um, it's just not as quite as bright as I expected it to be. So using one of my favorite little sponges just to make some texture here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some other colors and a little bit of uh, pan pastel. So this oil pastel didn't exactly give me the uh, effect that I was looking for. So I shut the camera off to see uh, how I wanted to proceed and I forgot to turn it back on. So this is where I'm going to end the video today. And I did end up adding some more embellishments. I changed that edging over there. And you can see all of that over on my Instagram page. Thank you for watching today. Feel free to give me a subscribe or a like or a comment. I do love hearing from you. Bye.